after a 14 year absence, we're finally back in Africa. We've started our new African adventure here at Ndarakwai, a 10,000 acre private game reserve an hour away from Kilimanjaro in northern Tanzania. We spent three nights here getting used to the sights and sounds of Africa. Camp was great, wildlife right in the camp, including a bush buck and her calf. The tents were pretty well houses, and the restaurant lounge was a nice setting for some excellent meals. Game drives were at the top of the activity list. Our guide Thomas showed us the wide range of wild duff right near the camp. The first morning here, we set out with some biology professors from Penn State University and caught dawn breaking over Mount Kilimanjaro. It was an incredible sight. The wildlife here was a gentle introduction to Africa. We saw large herds of eland, the largest antelope in Africa. These animals can grow to 10 feet in length and weigh up to 2,000 pounds. The antelope live in a variety of habitats, from semi-desert to subalpine grasslands, and Darakwai seemed a perfect place for them. Long time ago. There were also a variety of primates around camp. There was a large troop of baboons, and troops can range in size from 20 to 80 individuals that forage for any number of foods. There were also other types of monkeys, blue monkeys that came down from the trees to see what we were eating. Also, vervet monkeys were plentiful right across in Darakwai. Impalas are one of the most plentiful animals across the continent. Herds of females are usually led by one dominant male that often needs to fight for supremacy. Bachelor herds of only males are also a common sight. Zebras are a real icon in Africa and also a common sight at Ndarakwai. Zebras are the only wild member of the horse family that live in sub-Saharan Africa. Led by a dominant stallion, Small herds usually comprise related females. What's so interesting about zebras is how often they mix with other animals such as wildebeest, gazelles, and antelope. Wildebeest are among the most common animals that we saw across Tanzania. They can reach 7 feet in length and weigh up to 600 pounds. Wildebeest used to migrate across the continent, but with habitat loss, this incredible site is now limited to the Serengeti Mara ecosystem. We loved our stay at Ndarakwai, wine by the fire, great tents to sleep in at night. Most importantly for us though, was the chance to reacquaint ourselves with Africa, with its people, its wildlife, and a chance to quite frankly see the incredible sights of Tanzania. you'd say between 30 and 40 years old um, but in captivity they live a lot longer years that they have learned um, or most of them and one of the best parts of staying at Ndarakwai was the experience of walking with Cassis and Iziki these two young orphan elephants are being cared for by two German caretakers Ricarda and Dirk The two elephants were friendly right away. I have to say though that I was intimidated by their size. Even the baby was the size of a large bull. The two of them together however were fantastic. Ricardo told me to respect them and not to worry about them stepping on me. I have to say that I doubted her, uh, but eventually, after walking a little and seeing how they navigate around things, I felt a lot more comfortable with them. It was also wonderful to watch how close a rapport the elephants had with the two trainers. They were clearly very close to each other. The elephants were remarkably curious, always sticking their trunks in our face to try and get a good scent of us. The other thing that was interesting was that Ricarda and Dirk wanted to set up a non-profit to 
try and convince the locals about how valuable elephants are to them. It was a real privilege to walk with these animals. To say that they are curious and intelligent would be a huge understatement. As you can see, they were also rather friendly too. For both of us, this was a real highlight of our visit to Africa. Our group was lucky enough to be invited by Thomas, our guide at Ndarakwai, and a Maasai elder, to visit a nearby village. Thomas explained to us a little about the traditional way of life, the different stages in the man's life in particular, childhood, warriordom, and elderdom. He also explained to us the importance of cattle in the Maasai's culture. The women of the village came out to sell us their beadwork, and to be honest, we were more than happy to oblige. They displayed their work on the thorny acacia branches that made up the corral for their cattle. Many different pieces were displayed, decoration for both men and women, belts, bracelet, necklaces, even gourds for milking. We then had to negotiate through Thomas to get a good price. And of course, there were always the men nearby who were eager to have their pictures taken. And plus the kids. The kids were just unforgettable. Perhaps the biggest privilege was to be invited into someone's home to see how they live, to experience just for a moment what their today lives are like. They, each house normally has a kitchen. We grow. Yeah. The houses are small, but very organized. And it's the woman who is the boss here. She builds it. She repairs it. She maintains it. All of us were very grateful to Thomas for sharing his Maasai heritage with us. I think it's time to go.